So in this video we're going to look at factorising uh, into the completed square form. So we're going to use the tiles to introduce how we would do, uh, so how we would factorise the completed square form. And I'm just going to show you um, quite a nice way to introduce uh, the completed square form with the tiles just showing square numbers and not square numbers and then how we can have square algebraic expressions and then ones where we have to introduce um, extra tiles or takeaway tiles so that we've got the completed square. And then, um, yeah, I'll show you how to use the tiles to, 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 to do some examples as well. So I'll just cross over to the app. Again, you could use MathBot for this, obviously. Uh, so, so yeah, this, uh, this is just quite a nice introduction so, um, for pupils. So if we use the ones tiles just to make up some squares. So if we do, for instance, a, a square of four tiles, we could rewrite this in, in its factorised form, which would be two squared, so two by two. Um, we could do one for, I'll just do another one. So let's do, let's all look at nine. Oops. So we've got nine tiles and we can put that, if we rewrite that, I should say, into the square form, which would be three squared. So they are our perfect squares, of course. Um, we could also, though, show some no, non-squares. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to show uh, the number 3. Um, but what I want to do is I want to show it as a square. So I'm going to start off with the square of 4. And then I'm going to express it as, I'm going to express 3 as a square of 4. So 2 squared, but I'm only going to subtract 1 from it. So I've got it... Um, as an almost perfect square. I could do the same for 10, for instance. So we could use the square of nine. And in fact, I'm gonna just, oops, copy and paste this one that we did up here, just to cheat a little bit. So we could have nine, which is of course three squared. And this time we could add on a tile. So we can see there that we could write any number as a square plus or minus another number. And we can do the same with algebraic expressions as well. So let's have a little look at um, one of the algebraic expressions. So I'm just going to use my factors screen again. And let's have a little look at this expression here. So x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we've got it. Oops, sorry. We've got x squared and then we've got 1. And then obviously if I'm filling in there, I would need to have 2x tiles. There we are. Now what I've got there is a nice square. So I can see there that I've got the square of x plus 1. So the length and breadth are the same. And I can rewrite that algebraic expression as the perfect square x plus 1. Now, I can't do that for all algebraic expressions. Some of them are not square. So that's that one. How we would write it and explain that that's a perfect square. Let's have a look at some other ones. So let's have a look at x squared plus 2x plus 3. So x squared, I'm going to have three one tiles. There we go. Um, but I'm only allowed to use two x's. So... There we are. So remember this time I'm looking to rewrite this in what's known as the completed square form. So that is a square element plus or minus a number. So I'm not looking to try and make this expression here by introducing zero pairs or extra tiles. That is the expression. That's all the tiles I've got. And I'm just looking to rewrite it in a different format, which is the completed square format. So what I can see there is I've got a square, but I've just got these extra two annoying little tiles here. So what I can say is I've got that square element, so x plus 1 by x plus 1, but I've got an additional two tiles. So if we think back to when we we're looking at just the numbers and the square numbers and the non-square numbers, remember we had 10, so we had the square of 3, so we had 3 squared plus 1. So we had the square element and then we had the extra tiles to give us 
this expression here that we had started off with. Okay, so let's have a look at another one. So let's have a look at x squared plus 4x plus 1. So x squared, and then I'll do the 1. I'm looking for 4x tiles, but of course I can actually only fit in, oops, only fit in two of them. Um, so if I did have four, so that's all the tiles that I want to be using, but I can see that I've got three ones missing this time from that being a perfect square. So at the moment, I can see that the square is made up of x plus two, but this time I'm missing three. So I'm going to put in that it's the square, but I'm missing three tiles. So minus three. Okay. And the last one. Okay, so this time I've got x squared and I've got six x, positive six x. So I'm trying to make it nice and even because remember I'm trying to make a square. But I've got negative three tiles. Now with that setup, there is no way that I can get those negative three in there because x or one times one is not negative one. So one times one. So if I just put in the tiles that make up the length and breadth here. Oops, sorry. One times one will not give me negative one so I can't insert that tile in there so I've got to keep them off to the side so that means that I'm actually missing all nine tiles here so I'm missing nine and I've already got a missing or three to the side so the length and breadth is x plus three and if I tidy that up in total I'm accounting for those negative three I'm missing 12 tiles so that would be that expression rewritten in the completed square form hopefully that's enough of an idea for you um, obviously the lesson itself explains what I've went over there and how you would show that to pupils um, and again um, what I've done in the, the lesson is I've linked how you would go from using the tiles to not using the tiles and how Using the tiles actually helps them to understand the abstract uh, rule for not using the tiles, which is which is quite good, good and it just helps to embed their understanding. If you need any further help, just give me a shout.